In this tutorial, we'll take another look at the powerful terrain carving effects that can be achieved with uh, dynamic paint versus using sculpt mode. So I like dynamic paint a lot. It's a lot of fun. Well, that's because I like to paint and I like to sculpt too. So um, here I am running this cone through the scene. At the base of the cone, I have a light attached to kind of illuminate the scene as I go. So you can be creative in that sense as well. But this is how you might end up creating uh, an earthquake splitting effect and there is a way to do it no problem like you see on the disaster movies on TV and in this case I'm just carving the surface how I want it but what you can do is a couple things if you're not completely familiar with dynamic paint let me give you a quick setup on it so a couple things have to occur one is that your surface this was just a regular plane but in here you can see it's heavily subdivided that's critical to make your surface look nice and I wish I could even subdivide it more and in fact, and you can see why, because when I run Alt A, look at my frame rate down to nine frames per second. So this is pretty processor intensive. And the other thing is, this has to be set up as a dynamic paint canvas. Click that within the physics button, set canvas. I didn't. Only other one other thing, I set this to displace down in here, and that carves the surface versus painting colors on the surface. And then this object here is my brush in the scene, and I've also collected. Uh, dynamic paint press brush and I'm using the mesh volume in other videos we've used a uh, particle system to affect the surface in different ways so those that's really the only setup you need so in order to paint though there's a couple things within here you'll know and within here first you have to run alt a to make the simulation work this is from an old brush I'll show you that another time I click the brush though and then if I press G shift Z then I'm just carving along the surface so it won't raise up and down and so I'm just carving like this now, of course this this effect is going to go away at the end of this animation cycle which right there at the bottom is set to 700 frames well it's not only this that matters it's also this number over if I click the surface down in here this yikes let me stop that if I this is what really matters as well. Notice I have I'm running the running it out for 2,000 frames because if I ran it just at 50 frames in here and this was set to 700 and when I start it over and press G Shift Z and move well I'm now moving the plane it doesn't matter you can move either one but now when it gets to where is it oh usually, yeah see it stopped it's not carving because it's past frame 50 all right so it has to be both have to be set in order to make it work and if you don't set it high enough then your simulation will just run out and you'll lose your effect in here alright so I'm still just moving this instead of the object in the scene alright and there's I have another object in there as well let's see uh, it's on another layer uh, let me see so I'll just get this alright so if you want to so there's a light parented to it and you can see how you can make a earthquake effect but it's a lot of it's all about the shape of the brush and how you move the brush and things of that nature and it gives you a I mean it's a lot of power and it's a lot of fun create a surface like this early in the scene maybe up to 700 frames I'm creating the surface maybe hand painting it or maybe through keyframes I've set keyframes in advance through those 700 frames and the objects moving up and down and around and whatever and that creates your surface and then for the rest of your animation it would continue past that location all the way up this number up in here wouldn't matter anymore this 700 but this would it, your frame would have to just continue on so this wouldn't reset itself so it wouldn't cycle back on itself to create other effects like say an earthquake well we'll do that in the next lesson because I'm already running this is already running a little long but and you might set lights in advance so you can see the lights and the whole nine yards but it's a lot of fun and I encourage you to experiment with all kinds of different shapes shape brushes because that's really what makes the difference okay I'll see you in the next lesson